Welcome to O Brothers RC. Check out what I got inside this box. What? Check that out. I can't believe that fit in there. This is a 110 scale Enjora Rock Buggy slash Capper clone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build one for yourself. Then we'll take it out to my crawler course and see what it can do. After that, we'll come back here and break down what it costs and how it performed. So let's get over to the shop and see what really came in this box. All right, let's pop this box open and see what we've got inside. Looks like we've got some body panels. Then we got what looks like the front push bar and bumper. Comes with a nice LED light bar. Here's the transmission mount slash skid plate. This looks like a battery tray. Little bag of screws, another set of tubes for the chassis. And last but not least, we've got each side of the tube chassis. I've wanted a capper for quite some time now. I just didn't want to come out of pocket 500 bucks for one. So I'm stoked that Enjora made this tube chassis. I already built this little SCX24 out of the same tube chassis. This one's just a lot smaller, as you can see. Once again, we don't have any instructions here, but since I already put this one together, this one should be really similar. I've got this Enjora chassis. It's like an SCX10 clone. And they sell these for like 160 bucks on Amazon. I've had this one sitting around for quite some time. I was going to do a build on it, but I think I'm just going to use all the parts off of it for this build. Okay, let's get everything out of the packages so we can start assembling the tube chassis. So it looks like that X brace goes on top there. Then you've got these two pieces, which are pretty similar. This one goes in the back and it's gonna go in right there and then up here on the X brace. Then you got this piece and it goes in like so, kind of where the windshield would go. Now you just take the other half of the tube chassis and stick it on the other side. Then you take this piece here and it goes in the back here. Now you wanna get this piece and this piece here. So you're just gonna take these four short screws that they provided and you're gonna put them right in here to attach the battery tray to this cross brace. Then you take that cross brace and you attach it right here in the front. This is the front push bar bumper. There's one last piece that goes in the front here. And you attach this magnet to that piece because the hood on this thing actually pivots, which is pretty freaking cool. And you have a little metal piece here that goes on to catch with the magnet. You've got these two pieces here that go over this bar and bolt to the hood and act as hinges. I'm not gonna attach the hood right now or any of the other body panels until I get all of the other parts attached to this. I'll put the body panels on very last. I'm also probably gonna paint them. This tube chassis is super freaking awesome so far. It looks amazing. So here's a six cell nickel metal hydride and obviously it's not gonna fit. We're gonna need to use a shorty pack for this. Not a big deal, but just keep that in mind. So I've pulled everything that I wanna use on this build loose from the Enjora chassis that I showed you earlier. We've got the axles, the four link, the skid plate and the transmission as well as the motor. It's a 35 turn 540. Looks to be a pretty nice motor. I've never actually used one of these Enjora motors, so we'll see. And if I don't like it, I can always pull it out and replace it later. I do like these tires that came on the Enjora chassis. They're a generic Hyrax, and these are actually pretty dang soft. These Enjora ones, they're nice and soft. I just got some ones on the FMS Atlas that I bought, and they were much harder than these. These are real nice, uh, soft, soft foams inside, and they should work out real well. All right, let's get this transmission installed and the four link hooked up. All right, now that that's all bolted up, let's talk about shock placement. So I got a smoking deal on these 120 millimeter shocks. They are freaking awesome. They feel real good and they're pretty smooth, but they have this double spring style and this middle retainer here kind of rubs on the shock housing 
and it seems to catch just a little bit. Also, it said in the reviews that these cups come loose sometimes out on the trail and you'll lose them, as well as this lower shock mount comes loose. So to fix that rubbing problem with the retainer, it feels pretty sharp here, and I think that that's what's catching. So I'm just gonna take an X-Acto and spin it around the inside here. You could use a grinder for this, but being aluminum, the X-Acto cuts this stuff off real quick. Now it's nice and smooth and it shouldn't catch. Then I'm just gonna add a dab of E600 to the end of this and screw this on. That way it won't come loose. You can also use some Loctite for this. Then for the retainer, just another dab of E600. Get my spring back on there. And there we go, problem solved. Okay, so I've mounted the shocks in the front here and I really don't like the ride height. It's really, really high because I've got a 120 millimeter shock here. I want this extra travel. I want the long shock travel so that I can get massive articulation here, but I do not like the ride height. These springs are pretty stiff on these shocks I bought. They wouldn't be bad for any other truck, but this buggy has no weight in this chassis. So there's nothing pushing this shock down to lower the ride height. So then I started thinking I need a softer spring and I was looking around for some and I found these. These are actually off of an MN90 and they're real soft. So I went ahead and put one on the top portion of the shock here. I should get the best of both worlds here with this shock setup. I'll have the lower ride height, but I'll also have the long travel when it goes over something and releases. As I'm installing the wheels and tires, I'm taking this copper Romex wire and I'm wrapping the inner ring of the bead lock. Depending on how many rings you put on here, you can adjust the weight however you like it. You know, maybe different from the front to the back, whatever you wanna do. In this particular application, I'm using five wraps. You wanna make sure when you're done that each end ends at the same spot. That way your rotational weight will be the same. Then you just jam this in your tire. You wanna put the ends down first, inside first, so that they don't get bent and uh, stick, stick out the side of your tire. With the stamp steel and that copper inside of there, I've got a super heavy tire and wheel combo. Okay, so I pretty much got it all mocked up. The stamp steels wrapped with copper wire are working really well. You can see that the front tires don't wanna come off the ground when I'm tweaking the articulation here. And I still need to put these softer springs on the front shocks here, which is gonna give me even a little bit more articulation. It's also gonna reduce the ride height in the front, bring it down something like that. So that should work out really well. So next on the agenda is to get the electronics in. I'm gonna mount the speed control right here on the inside of the door. Then I'll just be able to reach in the window and flip the on and off switch right here. I installed a shorty LiPo pack here. And this thing comes with a battery strap. But when I had the battery strap installed, the battery could still slide back and forth pretty easily. So I installed this Velcro and I think it'll be easier to get the battery in and out as well. Another thing I wanted to mention was that this thing does not come with any kind of chassis servo mount. So you're gonna have to mount the servo down here on the axle, which is better anyway. That means you need to order an axle mount servo bracket. All right, I'm gonna get these electronics installed. I'm gonna get these panels painted. I'm probably gonna paint some other details on the truck as well. I've also gotta install this light bar. All right, I got everything painted. So I'm ready to put this thing back together. Let's get to it. One quick tip when you're painting small parts, if you put them on a piece of wire, you can hang them and you can paint them all at the same time, front and back. This is gonna save you a ton of time. All right, starting to take shape. I love the red contrast, it looks freaking awesome. What I'm installing now are these 20 millimeter hex wideners. And the reason I'm doing that is because I was getting some rubbing against the shock here with the front tire. I also want to widen this thing out so it's got really good stability on the rocks. So these should work really well for that. Wow, look at this thing. Man, it is cool looking. I'm super freaking excited about this thing. Look at that flex. All right, let's get them panels on. Well, there it is all done and man, it looks cool. Got a lot of red details on it. Looks freaking awesome. 
If you can't tell, I'm a huge fan of black and red. I think it looks freaking great together. Let's get it outside to my crawler course and see how it performs. Here we are at the starting gate to my crawler course. I've been doing some work on it. Got it all hooked up and ready for some filming. Here's the truck, or buggy I should say. Let's see what it can do. No problem. Nice. And we're into the course. Man, it looks crazy good. <laughs> I can tell you that. Okay, we're coming up on the new bridge I just finished. Let's see how it works. This is the first trip across it. Got to get my tire on the rope there. There we go. Little advertisement there. Oh, that's nice. Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> nice. Just in case you forgot what channel you're watching. Work this thing through the river rock section. Coming into a pretty rough section here. I haven't really fixed this section since it got trashed by the record rainfall that we had. But it handled it no problem. This thing looks so good it's hard for me to get it dirty. Oh, usually not like that about my trucks. I don't really care if they get dirty, but man, this thing looks so damn good. Hard for me to get it dirty. There we go. Nice. This thing is like cheating. Like it just will go over anything. Now I know why everybody buys those cappers. Little wheel speed there. Yep. Man, I am digging this freaking thing.
go back up that this way here. This thing is super capable and I'm absolutely in love with it. What an amazing little ray. Look at that. Man, what a freaking awesome rig. If you're thinking about building one of these, I highly recommend it. Super freaking fun. What an awesome little rig. I think we've seen enough to get a good idea about how capable this thing is and what it can do. So I'm going to head back to the shop now. We'll talk about what this thing cost in total to build. All right, now that you've seen what it can do, let's go over what it costs. The tube chassis was only 40 bucks. The SEX10 clone chassis was 160. The controller was 40, the ESC was 30. The servo mount was 10, the brass wheel extenders were 10, the wheels were 30, and the shocks were 25. So that's a total of about 360 bucks, which is still well under the price of a Capra. That's basically what a capper kit costs. Now, I don't know if this thing will outperform a capper because I don't have one, but you've seen what it can do out there and it performs very, very well. Kind of feels like I'm cheating. And I've never really been into these comp type rigs. I really like scale stuff a lot, but man, I can see why guys like them. So overall, this thing gets a thumbs up from O Brothers RC. And if you're thinking about building one, I'd say go ahead. Super fun to build and super fun to drive. If you found this video useful or entertaining, please hit that like and subscribe buttons and smash that bell to get notified when I post my next cool build. And remember, when you think RC, think O Brothers RC. Thanks for watching.